We turn now to a rare hurricane in the Pacific. The storm could hit California in the coming days. State officials have issued an advisory as they monitor the situation. Hurricane Hillary, as she's called, is currently churning a few hundred miles off Mexico's coast. For more on the storm, let's bring in CBS News senior weather and climate producer David Parkinson. So, David, how rare is this? It's incredibly rare. So the last time that we had a landfalling tropical storm mm -hmm. in Southern California would have been 1939. That's before we named storms. So that gives you an indication of how long ago it was. This is all of the storms that have come within 200 miles of where this storm would be making landfall. And you're saying, oh, there's a bunch of numbers on here. But uh, here's the thing that I want to kind of point out, which is to say this guy wasn't a tropical storm. Norman had already become extra tropical by the time it made landfall. Uh, Kathleen and Nora, again, making landfall. Landfall right here on the Baja Peninsula. We had Jen Cat who did this kind of fun little loop de loop again south of the border. Ignacio was extra tropical. Doreen stayed off the coast. And we had Kay last year that kind of went up the coast mm -hmm. and then did a little loop de loop out here. So we haven't had anything like this uh, since that 1939 landfalling storm. And you can see it's a pretty healthy, large size yeah. storm now. It's not going to have enough time really to weaken as it moves further north. How big of a threat? is this for Southern California and are they even prepared from an infrastructure standpoint because of what you just mentioned and not really having to worry about it all this time. Yeah, I mean, so it, it, rain like this is unheard of in the summer. So here's the deal. In California, the most rain ever recorded in San Diego for the month of August is a little over two inches. So, mm. they, you know, that should show you just how much uh, they are not expecting this in terms of rainfall totals and where this is going to be. What I want to do is I want to put the tropical track on here and show you the storm is going to strengthen to a category four before rapidly weakening as it approaches. It's just not going to weaken enough. So it's a category two on Sunday morning. By the time it's made landfall, it's now a low pressure system at 11 a.m. on Monday. But again, it's made its landfall and it's probably at tropical storm status. The other thing, again, this is for Californians who are not used to dealing with tropical systems. Anywhere in the cone is fair game for where this storm could be. And so it could make a landfall here on the Baja Coast. It could make a landfall here up by like Goleta and, and Santa Barbara or maybe San Pedro or, or um, Orange County down through San Clemente. Any place in this cone is fair game. Mm -hmm. And what happens there when you have a landfall uh, is really important because this right here, this is the European model, and it assumes wow. a track right here yeah. with the heaviest rain over Palm Springs, the low desert uh, into portions of the Imperial Valley and the Eastern IE. But if this storm track moves just 40 miles to the west, so again, it makes that path right up by Belmont Shore and Long Beach. Now you take all of this heavy rain and you shift it west. You shift it now into portions of Orange County. You shift it into portions of the IE uh, that are very well populated, like Hemet, uh, up towards Riverside and San Bernardino. The problem being here, now you've got all this topography. You've got mountains. You've got burn scars because of all the fires that they've had. And so when you get this much rain in a short period of time, over the desert, it really can't handle it. But again, over mountainous terrain, it can't handle that kind of rain. So you're looking at like a winter-like storm now in the summer in places that are not used to this amount of rain. And that really is the huge concern here. In addition, you'll have the winds gusting 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. So you could have the power outages and problems there. But the real problem is the fast and furious rain that we're getting out of this. So this is the time to take note, take cover. Um, we're currently in an El, Ni El Nino year. Um, explain that to us. I know we've heard that term, but what does it mean? And also, how do the warm temperatures fuel these storms at yeah, this time? Yeah, so, so El Nino basically is a large area of warm water down here off the Peruvian coast. That's what you have when you have an El Nino. And what it generally tends to do is it warms through the ocean currents, the water everywhere else. Take a look at this. This is your departure from normal water temperature. Everywhere, basically, with the exception of this little sliver off the Baja, is warmer than it should be right now. So okay. the water is warm. When the water is warm, it fuels the storms. Now, ordinarily, when you have an El Nino year, you can tend to get something that's really interesting, which is you get a lot of extra wind coming across, and it kind of cuts the storms apart. We're not expecting wind shear as the storm moves up the coast here. So again, it's unlikely that the storm is going to dissipate. And the other key thing that I want to point out 
out here, though, is that the storm is really being fueled by our um, uh, heat dome. So this is your heat dome right here. And what's interesting about this, right, is it's now got to go around it. And so that's what's forcing it right up the coast here. You've got a width now of about 200 miles from the center of the storm to the edge of the impacts. So this could be impacting not only Southern California, but also Vegas, also Yuma, also portions of Arizona as well. So this is a big, wide impact. It's not a skinny, tiny storm. And the stronger it gets, the larger the storm will likely be in terms of impacts as it makes that landfall. So we'll be keeping a close eye Sunday night into Monday morning. David Absolutely. Parkinson, thank you. No problem.